Hello, this is Nice Wonder, and welcome to the Now Man Show. I've been a musician and a lover of music since I was a kid in the 1960s. I collected a lot of records on vinyl. You know, we listened to the crackles and the pops, and it was music to our ears. Recent generations, though, music lovers have been listening to CDs and digital downloads, and they don't have to deal with the wear and the tear that a needle has on a record. However, some people believe that today's music fans are missing out on a unique experience that only can be had from listening to vinyl records. Joining us today are two filmmakers, producer and director Kevin Poor and executive producer Rob Mails, and they've created a new documentary called Long Playing. It's all about people's love for vinyl, vinyl records and how some revolutions never die. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Robin and Kevin, welcome to the Great. Man Show. Great, thanks for having us. My pleasure. Uh, first of all, what was the inspiration of creating this film? Um, the inspiration it actually came out of a visit to a local record store. Ah, uh, which one? Uh, Canterbury Records. Uh, That's here in Pasadena. Pasadena, yes. On Colorado and, Boulevard, and right down the street. Right down up, <laughs> maybe a quarter mile from. Yeah. I could have walked there and buy a record right can, now. Yeah, yeah, we could do that after the show. <laughs> May, <absolutely>. Good idea. <laughs> Um, and um, I, I went there with uh, uh, one of our other producers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'd, I'd collected records my entire life. I, I've never stopped. And about five years ago, uh, he, we decided to go to this thing we found out about called Record Store Day, wow. which is a huge thing every year where um, lots of great music is put out, one-of-a-kind music. And mm -hmm. people go line up for hours to go see it. Well, I didn't know this at the time. And we went to record store day, and I thought I was just going to walk into the store and buy a specialty record. And when we showed up, there had to be maybe 150 people in line around the building um, waiting to get in to buy these records. Hmm. And uh, wow. he turned to me and said, we have to make this into a movie because there's something going on. And basically, that's what we did. We started that day. You know, wow. I took out my phone and filmed a little bit, and we were off to the races after that. So. Wow, so Record Store Day, that's, uh, when did that start? Um, I believe it's been going for eight years now, about wow. eight years. They would probably uh, be angry if I got it wrong. Yeah, and they yeah, probably will when they find out. Yeah, yeah, but it has been going on yeah. for a while, yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's watch a clip from the film right now. first record that I bought was The Cure's Japanese Whispers. Hound Dog. I'm Still Standing. Thriller. Double Dutch Bus. It's Ghost Town. Birds of Fire. Beaver Rama. Penny Goodman and High Five. A kiss Record. And Justice for All. I Want to Hold Your Hand. The Twist. This was your yeah. first album? That was the first one that I purchased. I never will stop going to record stores. That's ingrained in me and one of the things I live to do. I think as long as you love music and your taste is evolving, your record collection is never complete. Well, I don't buy digital music, ever. All you get is push play to hear it. Vinyl, it's real, it rocks. Why do you love records? That's like saying, why do you love breathing? Yeah, tell us why records? <laughs> good, good question. Um, for me, um, it has always been a, a connection to music that I've, I've felt. And even when I started buying CDs, etc., it never really had that same kind of feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then once I started the documentary and started, you know, asking people, I found that a lot of people felt the same way um, that I did, which is um, they felt disconnected from music. They felt disconnected from something that they loved so much. And it turns out that people really like to have these physical things 
and they like to be engaged in listening to music, and they like to read the liner notes and look at the artwork, and you know, etc. So, Y Records was basically um, because it makes you concentrate, it brings you into the experience. Absolutely, and we're going to get into that experience that we all share here at yeah. this table and yeah. beyond. <laughs> um, now, you interviewed, was it over 100 people for this film, right? Yes, 100. Uh, all different kinds five. of people, because I saw musicians I knew, one that I personally met. Yeah. Also, uh, record store owners, record producers, even a record executive, I think I saw in there, a couple of DJs. Yes, yes. Um, so, uh, how did you go about that process of finding the people? I, I'm a list. I'm a list maker. Yeah. I like to make lists. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I like two things. I love other than music are making lists and puzzles. And uh, the minute we started doing this, I started making lists, and the lists were things like, what do people want to hear about records? Mm -hmm. You know, and one of the lists was, who out of you know everyone, who do I know that may be able to help me talk to people, or who do I know that even collect records, et cetera, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, based mm -hmm. upon, you know, past jobs and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and through that list, um, I contacted people, I interviewed a few people, um, and the last thing I would say to anyone that I interviewed was, um, do you know anyone who collects records? Mm -hmm. Do you know anyone who might want to talk to me? You know, wherever they are, whatever it is, I'll go, I'll go talk to them. And then people would ask their friends or ask someone else. And I found that if it was a particularly good interview, meaning that we connected and you know we had a nice time, um, they would turn me on to five or six people. If it was you know a decent interview, you know they would give me a name. You know, so and that's and that's how I it spread out from maybe eight or nine people on our, the original list to 105 people at the at the end. Wow, it's, it's funny, whenever it involves music, there's always a network of, of people that want to talk about the experience. It's really amazing, isn't it? Yeah. When you bought records, what was the experience? What was the excitement of the experience with the records? I believe that, and it, to some extent, this continued with CDs, but I believe that there was more of a sense of community mm -hmm. in local record stores, etc., um, when when vinyl, when records were the prevailing media. And so you would go into these communities and people would share, you know, what they were listening to or tell you that's a horrible record, don't buy that, etc. And I think that sense of community bonded people together in purchasing, listening, experiencing music in a way that slowly disappeared mm -hmm. when when CDs came in basically because CDs were smaller mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. know and they were the, although the CD itself isn't fragile the cases were fragile and the artwork you know yeah. it's you know yeah it's, you can't really look at it it's too yeah. small it was too small yeah. yeah and i think that that's really what it was i think it's the community behind you know vinyl and i think that's what's brought it back today in in some extent people like to be involved in that kind of uh, music experience where it's not only them and personally engaged but they have friends over you know the one of the aspects of the movie that's not played up because it just it just didn't fit was the concept that there are people who have listening parties now yeah you know yeah, they have three right. or four friends come over and they you know open a bottle of wine or you know that's whatever right. they're going to do and they put records on yeah. and they're listening to music and it's an experience that's hard to obtain by putting Spotify on and you know letting a playlist run. Well, let's know. let's look at some of your f personal favorite records, okay. shall we? Okay. Um, uh, this is uh, Jimi Hendrix's yes. "Axis Bold as Love." Uh, not only is it one of my favorite records, but I've always loved this cover. You know, and it was uh, later on I found out that Jimmy wasn't enamored with this cover. Oh wow! Um, because uh, of the because of the subject matter, yeah. he, was, he was a little hesitant to have his face put on, you know, the body of Vishnu or, yeah. you know, one yeah. of them. So, um, but I've always loved this, and I think it's just uh, amazing, and I think the artwork itself kind of transcended the time in the same way that the music did. You know, the package of the art and the music together was, was an amazing, you know, was an it amazing was, thing. It was, really. Thank you. are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, John Coltrane, A Love Supreme. Uh, yeah. I brought this because I thought that the photograph actually captured um, everything that's inside of it. It's mm -hmm. very serious, mm -hmm. you know, piece. 
Um, and I personally think that this is um, uh, one of the most important pieces of popular music ever created. And as I, I tell people, well, all the, I think it connects with something that's deeply personal to him and at the same time it explains a lot about the nature of being human and he, this expressed his love for you know his deity you know what he yeah. believed yeah. and I think that when you sit down and listen to it and if you're in a frame of mind where you're listening to it it will make you connect with whatever you know you think I always say tell people that um, if if there is a God um, then uh, she came down and she kissed John Coltrane and he made this album. Wow, wow. So, so. See, and that's the beauty of it. Is you, you can, just with that, you can create a conversation. That's what people would do when they mm -hmm. would sit around. I, you know, I remember sitting in my, you know, my lonely teenage bedroom and then a friend would come yeah. over and we'd listen to the yeah. same album, flip it over. And side you're, side. you're sitting there and you're, yeah. you're, you're opening up the the jacket and by the way I love this cover yes and you're reading all the liner notes or, or as the songs are happening like 21st century schizoid man you're actually reading the lyrics yes you know just, it's just awesome what do they really mean yeah. you know and you make your own stories up you know yeah, let's, was, let's see some more um, this uh, is an album uh, misplaced childhood by a b band Marillion that's one of those bands I've heard I but I don't think I really heard this album yeah and uh, this was a had a hit a hit song on it but I uh, Kaylee is the name of the song, by the way. And you, mm -hmm. if you listen to like you know '80s rock oh, radio, yeah, it'll come popping up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just thought this uh, the theme of this and the artwork. You know, it was a, a continued theme through their first four albums, mm -hmm. um, and I found it to be. Um, I just really liked it, and basically, I wanted to make sure that people saw yeah, this album. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Yeah. Um, this is an album uh, by uh, Nusrat Fatah Ali Khan. Um, yeah, who's a great Kual singer. Um, what label is that on? Uh, this is on Real World. That's which what I was going to say. Peter, I recognize the label. Yeah, yeah. Peter Gabriel's yeah. Uh, label. I love this album cover, and I, I listened to this a thousand times, and I like the fact that there's a connection in the music, and they're basically singing the Koran. Wow, um, in, really? in this. Wow. Yes, he is, yeah, it's a, a very religious album. I like the fact that the, the music's playing. He's singing. I don't understand anything he's saying. I can pick, you can pick up names, proper mm -hmm, names mm -hmm, in it, mm -hmm. but um, it connects deeply. I find it very you know emotional. I find it very. Uh, I've, I, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful album, and that you know. Is, it, is, the, are the, is the the lyrics in, in Arabic? Yes. The yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah. And so, um, and I actually he's from Pakistan. So oh, I, Pakistan. yeah. Pakistan. So um, I don't know what he's. Saying. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, Ooh, Iggy and the Stooges. Iggy and the Stooges. Um, uh, Metallic KO. And uh, this is basically came from a bootleg recording oh, wow. that was in. It ended up being put out on Passport, um, which was a, a label that did a yeah, lot of things like this. Yeah. Um, and I, I liked it because this album cover actually captures everything that's going on inside here. This is a noisy album <laughs> recorded from the audience and at the end of it uh, Iggy gets in a fight with some in the audience wow. and you can hear them punching each other <laughs> on the and uh, you know I've played this album a, a ton of times and I, I love this album and I managed record stores for a few years and I used to remember it would get to be um, you know about 10 minutes to closing and I would tell everyone working there, hey, it's time for Metallic KO, because I knew the customers were going to go like, what's going on? And then they would hit the door, and I'd get to go home early. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, it's a, it's a band that's uh, currently um, in existence, Elbow, from oh. Manchester, England. They make beautiful music. These, out, these songs are fantastic. Um, what and, style would you say it is? Uh, well, they label it as prog rock, oh, they do. but without the solos. So oh, really? it's these beautiful, ornate, orchestrated things with the, the guy, uh, guy, Garvey. guy Garvey sings these fabulous songs, but there's no solos in it. So for people who just like songs, which is like the basis of every great you know, record, then this, they're a great band. So. One of the best albums of modern times. Right oh, now. thank you, really. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that, that uh, is definitely something that, that I will check out. I'm always learning new things every day and you, you can't possibly hear all the music that, that, that comes out ever and that's exactly and it. even if yeah. you could do it 24 hours a day you still wouldn't hear everything that there is to hear uh, your entire lifetime that's how amazing all this is yes so are there particular artists um, that you would say are most famous for their album covers um, well yes 
Yes. 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 <laughs> Um, like the, this is uh, Roger Dean uh, right here? Yes, it's uh, essentially. And uh, yeah. that's Roger Dean. It looks like mixed with hypnosis and a yeah. few other people. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Roger Dean was an artist who drew these fantasy landscapes. And mm -hmm. Yes and Budgie and a few other artists yes. from the time uh, would use his artwork. And mm -hmm. it was almost like a continuing story because he had a very unique style floating cities and you know strange animals etc a lot to look at yeah that you, that you couldn't fit just on the front cover you had to open the whole thing up and sometimes inside and too. sometimes inside as well and yeah. uh, I in one album in particular I remember a relayer you know yes, I yes. remember playing that album and I said oh look there's a rattlesnake on the yeah, front. you know I that know, kind of right, thing exactly so he was very famous very famous hypnosis Mm -hmm. was a was a, um, a graphic design company that mm -hmm. did lots of albums. They did most of the Led Zeppelin albums. Mm -hmm. I think they may have done all the Led Zeppelin albums. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pink Floyd, mm -hmm. uh, Dark Side of the Moon, yes, you know, yes. Wish You Were Here. They did all yeah, of that, yeah. you know, all of those things. And very, very, you know, famous. Why does music sound better on vinyl? In the movie, that's what we spend the longest mm -hmm. amount mm -hmm. of time discussing. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and everyone has a different idea of why that is. Um, I personally uh, think it has to do with the fact that music is, um, is uh, our waves. Yeah. Music is a physical thing, and someone actually talks about this in the movie. Uh, music's a physical thing, and digital music is a computer program. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, and I know people, and it sounds great, you know, don't get me wrong. Digital music can sound great. I just think there's, there's something different between, you know, physical music and digital music that, um, that is lost. There's something lost in translation. Do you have a large collection? Of albums? Yeah. Yes. I, well, not compared to the people in the movie, but yeah, yeah. I have uh, over uh, 2,400 albums. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What about you, Ron? About a tenth of that, about 240. About 240 albums. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's good. So uh, talking about the documentary, um, you're, at, you're at a point now where how are you going to distribute this film? Probably if there is such a thing as a challenge when you're working on a project that's about something that you really love. Um, raising awareness, which we've successfully done. with We've had a couple of private showings, um, invite-only audience. And uh, the buzz from that, is, uh, the, the feedback from that has been quite positive, Great. actually. The biggest hurdle is probably the last hurdle is finishing costs for the movie. Um, but, you know, we probably chose a subject matter for a movie that could be the most expensive in the world. Right. Music. Right. Um, we would have probably been better off actually flying Matt Damon to Mars and yeah, filming yeah, it yeah, right. in real time. Yeah, but yeah. Um, uh, we have, uh, as I said, we, you know, we've reached out, um, we've spoken to some record companies, actually some uh, uh, pressing plant owners, um, and just generally put the word out there. And we'd, we'd be quite happy to find someone to partner up to you know, uh, um, help us with the finishing costs. We're also looking at crowdsourcing, and yeah. it's, it, it's mainly for licensing, you know, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. we're good boys, we're doing everything the right way, we're making sure everybody gets uh, gets paid for the use of the material, so. That's the biggest challenge. It's the biggest challenge and it's one that's becoming, uh, gra as I said, gradually smaller. Um, we have people interested, um, we're just, uh, we're looking to get that finalized and from there, who knows, as far as di distribution goes, um, there are thousands of art theaters spread across the country that this, mo uh, this movie fits perfectly into. Um, there are a number of um, uh, TV channels, internet channels that this would also be a perfect fit for. So we have a lot of options. And, and some of them are very interested. But you know, there's an interest up to a point. Right. And that point is, where's that piece? You know, it's that Correct. thing where it's like, mm -hmm. well, that piece is coming. So. Yeah. And, and social media. You yes. know, um, there's a huge audience there, I know personally, that, that likes vinyl records. You know, you hear about the music business, and you hear so many negative things about the people in the music business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let me tell you that they were, the people that I talked to, almost to a person, were generous with their time. They loved the music. They cared deeply about what was happening with music. Um, and 
I don't want to say that's a surprise, but if you hear so many negative stories, mm -hmm. you know, oh, mm -hmm. the, you, you know, the music people, you know, blah, 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 and, um, and you don't experience that it, at all, um, that was kind of surprising. I, people were, were really, really kind to me during the course of making this movie. And I, I think that, um, that was unexpected. I want to say surprising. I say it was unexpected that people would be that that so generous with their time. And I noticed uh, uh, some people in the film, Ben Montinch, yes, keyboardist of uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. I saw Rhett Miller from the old ninety seven. Yes. Uh, I saw um, a gentleman from Lone Justice. Yes, Marvin Nizioni. Mar yeah. Yes. Marvin. I don't know how to pronounce the Italian. So <laughs> yeah. And I saw Andy Chanley uh, from. Uh, the sound 100.3. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I s actually saw someone that uh, gave me this. Really? Yeah, uh, Ja Paul Joe. Oh, yeah. From uh, Dread Zeppelin. From Dread Zeppelin, yes. He's no longer with us. Yes. So we can dedicate this episode to uh, Joe. This is for you. Great, thank you. My movie's uh, dedicated to him, too. Oh, that's great. Yes. That's fantastic. Yes. What a he nice was, guy. He was just, he was really nice to me. And, you know, I. I, if I had any guilt over anything in the movie, it's the fact that we hit it off and we corresponded. It turned out we had mutual friends. Um, and the last thing I said to him was, oh, I'm gonna, I'll come back and I'll bring some sandwiches and beer and we'll hang out in your store because he owned a record yep, yep. store, Resistor Records. Yep. And, um, and Sierra Madre, right? Right over yes, here. Sierra yeah. Madre. Yeah. And I just, I never made it back to the mm. store because of, you know, the same yeah. thing, the reason I was there, so. Yeah. But, so it's a, uh, quite a variety of different people giving their personal stories, which is fantastic. So great work on that. Oh, thank you very much. So yeah. um, now you've, you've screened it where so far? Uh, we were at uh, CineFamily on Fairfax in Hollywood mm -hmm. and at the Art Theater in Long Beach. Uh, oh, wow. Which, yeah. And so and we're talking to a couple other places right now. Yeah. Um, and so I think that might happen pretty soon. And we can help uh, get the word out that... Uh, that would be great. Absolutely. Was, uh, mm -hmm. you know. And you know, records never did really go away in, in England, right? Or in Europe. They, is that correct, Ron? Um, the CD craze caught on later did it in the really? UK. Yeah, so it, it took over the vinyl over there as well? Or? It eventually, yeah. Oh. It, everybody loves the portability yeah, so, that's true. of the digital. Um, I, myself, I've you know, I, I balance both. I like to have the records, but yeah. at the same time, I've got my MP3 player with me at all times. Um, but some artists, they maintained the vinyl pressings, you know, they kept putting their work out on vinyl. I, I don't think it ever really died or went away. Well, I, yeah, I, yeah. it's surprising, but I, just last week I read an article that last year mm -hmm. uh, records outsold uh, CDs in England. Y you know, I think I saw that yes. somewhere too, yeah. Yeah, so that'll tell you yeah. something, yeah. you know. And the digital downloads are kind of... Um, really a mixed bag. I mean, it's yeah. like uh, it's exposing music on one hand, but it's also not paying the artist that took the time to make it. And, yes. I think the, the advent of the internet and digital music has made artists more accessible to people. It's easier to find new artists. Um, you know, uh, yes. with, with the radio stations, you click on one of your favorite artists and they give you suggestions for mm -hmm. similar artists or you and may also like. I think that's great for getting the word out there. But it, you can't be actually owning a copy of something. That's true. Yeah. Well, a like, vinyl copy. A vinyl copy of something. Mm -hmm. And, and it, like you were saying earlier, going back to that idea of community, that vinyl had a, a unique way of just bringing people together. I mean, I know in college, we two of us worked in a record store at the, uh, on the campus of University of Oklahoma. And uh, one of my roommates had a record rack, and, and people literally came to us because they knew where the good music was. Yeah, you know, and we had all kinds, and it just it was hours and hours and hours of talking and looking at at, at the jackets and reading the liner notes, and I mean that's why I know a lot of the things that I know about who worked with who and when and and how I memorized some of the lyrics. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, gentlemen, this has been a lot of fun. Awesome. Thank you very much for coming on the Now Man Show. I'm here with Kevin Poor, Rob Mails, of uh, the movie Long Playing, about records. This is Nice Wonder, and you've been watching the Now Man Show. Keep on rocking.